What up, y'all? My name is Pink Pressure, and this is my route to fame. He said, what you know about love? He said, what you know about trials? Baby, I don't really know none. Cause they both don't fuck me up. They both don't fuck me I think the real issue is all with my daddy. Not that I knew him, but see, this what happened. Let me go way back before I was trapping. When his absence created a chain of reactions. And I was cool with the cheating and beating. I was cool with the lack of attachment. Long as a nigga would come home at night. I ain't care about the way that he acted. To be truthful, I never like fucking. Only did it to keep him around. I ain't even no shit about nothing. Just getting my stuff going around at the round. Think about all the times I said no. Can't tell you the feeling, but remember the sound. That first time I couldn't tell my granny, cause I had just snuck out the back of the house. The next time nobody was with me, it happened on my mama couch. My mama would say it ain't happen, but the stains on the cushions could vouch. It started to become a pattern. I would say no, they will giggle with laugh. Had me on the floor with a mattress, don't matter. I know how it goes, so I stopped trying to bad. Stop going to school, stop breaking the rules. My poor granny ain't know what to do, so I watched her shadow. She knew they had fucked with her baby. Then I became pink, they no longer knew about the jazz. Tattoos on my waist to bruises on my face. I never forget how that effing and taste. Don't know what I did, he can't even say. Start blaming the perkies and medical drinks. He said, what you know about love? He said, what you know? Ain't pressure, man. It's your first interview. How you doing? I'm cool. What's up, y'all? For so, sure. So that in, that song was actually pretty deep. You want to kind of touch on that? Um, yeah. I mean, that song just kind of, you know, um, showcased my talent first and foremost. Told a little bit about my past, my story. Made me who I am today, you know. Um, but before I get too deep into that, I had to say in this interview, you know, before that song drops, that song really touches um, home as far as it goes with my mama and some of the things we went through when I was younger. Me and my mom didn't have a good relationship. It was me and my grandma. So, you know, um, I said some things. It's a true story, though. She know what's up, but I do have to give her credit as far as how far she's come and um, being a woman and just her as a person, period. You know, she's building a relationship with my daughter now and things like that. So before that does drop, I do talk a lot of my music period about the things that me and my mother went through because it did affect me but i have to give her credit where it's due so yeah all right i think it's kind of dope that you keep a balance between the type of music that you make you you make turn up music but you also talk about you know how you how that kind of led you to where you went right right so how how do you even keep that balance Uh, honestly it's a lot of personalities inside my brain. All right. Shit. If you know, you know. You know, if you've been around pink, you know. All of them solid. They just all fucked up in their own way. So, therefore, I really focus on when I'm making music. Most um, female rappers, you know, in my lane or whatever the case may be, talk about, you know, popping pussy, shaking ass. Niggas can't fuck with me, cheat on me, whatever. But we don't always feel like that. It's a nigga somewhere fucking the lashes off you, bitch. Like, making you really cry your eyeballs out and beg him, like, for real, that's real life, you know, and I'm I'm willing to say that this show was nigga fucking the last on me, but um, you know what I'm saying? I try to keep that that spectrum broad because I want a bitch to be able to be like, oh, I want to get some money. Let me turn on pink pressure. Oh damn, I'm feeling hurt about how my mama just did me. Let me play pink pressure. Oh damn, me and this nigga going through. Let me play pink pressure. Oh damn, I'm a single mom. I can relate to. That. It's all types. It ain't just oh only three or fours can listen to my shit. Only moms listen to my shit. Only you know it's not like that. That's why I try to keep that very open. And also because truly and genuinely, I'm a new motherfucker. Every time I put on a new wig, so I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, now you definitely got multiple personalities. Uh, for those that know you, they know that all of them are pretty dope. There is an interview that just came out where an individual kind of talks about their encounter with you. You know uh, what I'm saying? Oh. I don't know if you, you got sent that or not. They be, you know how they be having, like, Instagram trolls, and then they got the troll, like, when we, when we was kids, they said a grumpy old troll that lived under the bridge. Yeah. Um, people, you know, tend to say things, and this about me, and I am fucked up, but then I just admit that, all right, bitch. So, moving forward, um, I think in that interview, it was said that I don't got no brain, and you know, it's a lot of things I don't got. Don't got a million dollars. Don't got a baby daddy. Um, but one of, I do have a brain, you know, but I'm trying to see, do you got a car? Do you got a crib? Do you got a bitch? You sure don't got no neck. So, um, I just feel like 
none of the things that were said was credible. They come from somebody who, everybody got a neck. Why you don't got no fucking neck? That shit ain't credible. Let's see your bank account. Let's talk about real shit. Like, real shit, I get money. I, I got my own car, my own car. I, I'm, I'm straight. So, the thing, let's focus on the things I do got. Or the, or the positive thing. Motherfuckers try to show me in a negative image. And that's okay because there is a negative part about everybody. I know I'm fucked up, baby. But there's a lot of positive that comes with me, too, and that's real shit. For sure. Now, you kind of touched on you being a single mother. How, how, how is that? How was it becoming a mom in the first place? How was it finding out that you were going to be taking care of that child on your own? Um, Honestly, <laughs> that's not something you can, like, prepare for or when it happens just be like, okay, bet. It is definitely a process, and I did have to take it to the chin and, you know, eat that shit up. And anybody who, who has ever been around me and my child know I, I ate that shit up. Real talk, I'm 20 years old, and um, also, you know, I'm a type 1 diabetic. I, I just got a lot of other things going on in my life that I battle with that when that was put on my plate, I was like, shit, you got to eat it up like you ate everything else. It's rough, though. I ain't going to fake that shit breaks my heart a lot of times because my biggest, like, goal that I was going to stand on when I got grown was to not – um, put my daughter in the same shoes that I got put in. No daddy, no stable, you know, household seeing a mama and a daddy. Like, I was big on that, and I told myself I was going to stand on that. So it's like, damn. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I, I put too much blame on myself. Like, I set my daughter up for failure. And, and that really hurt. It, it, it really do hurt me on oh God. That's the only part, though, because a baby don't keep no nigga, and I sure didn't try. So it's, it's just like that's the part that really affects me from all of that. So, so how was it balancing, you know, being a mom and also trying to pursue your rap career? I know you used to come here in the studio. You had the baby on you while you were recording and stuff like yeah. that. I don't feel like um, it really comes becomes too much of a problem. It's really the the politics and the people around me that really um, there was a lot of people who did not want me to make that decision. But to me, that decision was much needed because it not only gave me something to go hard for, someone to go hard for, but something to live for because. It's a point in time where I feel like I didn't have nothing. So um, it made my music ten times better. You know what I'm saying? It gives me more shit to talk about, like I said. And um, I just feel like it's not really a burden at all. She was in the studio with me in my stomach, on my titty. Like, <laughs> I was breastfeeding in the studio. Like, I, that, that, that never stopped me. Late nights, she'll be up looking at me while I'm writing music. Like, that, that didn't become a problem until other people made it a problem. It's not a problem on my end. No, for sure. So you really, you're really big on giving back. I know in your story you post, you know, clothes and stuff like that, diapers. Are you giving out? How important is that to you, and why do you even do it in the first place? Um, for the most part, it's because um, I was by myself my whole pregnancy. You no know, gender reveal, no baby shower, no nothing. You know, I had support here and there, but for the most part, I was one deep in my house, and I had to make shit happen, pregnant and all, um, with no help and no support. So, therefore... Um, I see a lot of young girls these days getting pregnant by these dudes and, you know, same similar situations happening. And I just feel like if there's some way possible that I could shine light to the next younger girl who is in the same position as me or is finna be, I try my best to do that. And also because I know the things that I've done in my past or, you know what I'm saying, still do sometimes. I'm fucked up. I've been through a lot that made me the way I am and I make mistakes. So I feel like if you know you fucked up and you can acknowledge that, but still try to do things to better yourself or better the surroundings around you and make sure you still do some solid shit, some, you know, wholehearted shit. Not saying that that make up, but I just feel like, shit, we can't control it. We fucked up. We really can't. Because a lot of my fucked upness come from things I could not control that happened to me. So, therefore, what we can do is shit. Try to make that shit the most of it, make it better. Show people there's still a positive side to you. I know it's a negative side to me. I flash for sure, and I I've been through a lot, so it's time that I just trip. But like, I'm I'm a good bitch though. I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm a real bitch. You're a good mom too. So you got a lot of fans, but from what I, from what I seen, you've been having these fans before you even started rapping. For sure, my fans real as fuck. I love my fans. Shout out my fans. Like they they real for sure. Um, they've been staying down even though I've not been consistent. They still. My fans know 60-second clips, for sure. Every one that I've ever posted, they could tell you word for word what I said, what kind of hair I had in the video. Like, um, yeah, but even before that, like, anybody could vouch for this. Instagrams I had, you know what I'm saying? I always went up, memes went up. I just always been kind of known a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So it definitely didn't stem from anything or anyone, so to say. Um, can't nobody take credit for that. Um, I definitely 
as far as the city go. Really, in a few couple places, people knew who I was for sure. Yeah, and you only got like, if I'm not mistaken, like two songs out, and you got like this big army of fans already. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. And you really don't do interviews, so a lot of people don't know too much about you, how you came up and stuff like that. Before we even get into that, why is that? Why don't you do that many interviews? Yeah, I've never done an interview, honestly. Do you get asked a lot, though? I bet you do. Yeah, facts. People try to pay me and everything, but um, that's a good-ass question. I don't go to them hoes, or I've never done one, because I never feel like gen somebody reached out to me genuinely wanting to hear about my story and how um, I became Pink Pressure or what the things that made me who I am today. I talk about, damn, you said that in your song, like, go in on it. They don't want to really know about me or my mind. I feel like all that shit messy, like, because of the politics and stuff, the industry. They want to get me up there to ask me questions about shit that I don't, I don't want to talk about that. I'm here to, you know what I'm saying, make my music for other people and they feelings and shit. So why the fuck we talking about some messy ass shit? Right. No, for sure. So let's dive into it. Um, before you even rapping, I know you were doing poems and stuff like that. Yeah. When I was younger, I wrote spoken word poetry. Okay. It's something that a lot of people don't know. But um, I lived with my aunt for a little bit when I was younger, and she was always a part of my life. She does spoken word, spoken word poetry, um, you know what I'm saying? So I seen her in the mirror doing it, seen her going to, you know, places and stuff and perform, and she is a black woman, and it really um, motivated me because she took her craft and ran with it, and she go hard with it. The lady is hard. But it definitely motivated me seeing it firsthand. Like, that's what kind of pushed me, like, okay, I'm talking, she go on cruises and performing, all type of stuff. She kept it going, you know what I'm saying, and pushed herself without nobody else as a woman, a black woman at that. So it's like, yeah, that really gave me that push to go ahead and have some faith in myself. So did that make it easier to transition into rap? Hell no. Hell no, because um, <laughs> she does spoke a word about, you know, real shit, you know. Uh, so when I was writing my poems, it would mainly be about, like, my feelings and shit. And you don't hear a lot of bitches other than like Tink and Marie rapping just straight about, and I'm not. And then them is just feelings, female feelings. I'm talking about real feelings like pain, depression, anxiety. You don't hear bitches just speaking on that. You really don't. I mean, if not, it gets called weird and shit. And and you know what I'm saying. In our age generation, in our the black community, like that shit get frowned upon. So, shit, it was hard to transition. Cause how the fuck I'm gonna talk about that behind these little. Gangsta ass shit, that beats and shit they making nowadays. That shit was not easy. For sure. So was it, how was your first time being in the studio? First ever time? It was lit. My grandma came with me. Oh, your grandma? <laughs> my grandma. My grandma was a real nigga. That's, that was real for sure. Um, had her little Android record me and everything. My grandma was my dog. Um, she definitely came with me. I was young. I was scared to cuss at first. <laughs> I was there bitching everything in front of the damn lady. And she was just right there like, Go pink. <laughs> that shit was so funny. But um, it definitely was nerve-wracking. But the fr I promise, as soon as I recorded that one song, it was up from there. I was so proud of myself, and I heard that shit back. And, like, one thing people always give my credit is my delivery. Like, no matter what, my delivery hard. So, like, when I heard that shit with the B, with the little mix, and my, man, that shit turned me up on oh, God. All right. Who are you inspired by when it comes to, like, music and stuff like that? Um, Like, is there anybody specific that kind of led to to the way you rap now? Mm, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that led to the way I rap. Honestly, it took a long time for me to find my sound and um, be comfortable in my sound and be versatile. But, you know, one of my favorite rappers, Three. Another one of my favorite rappers, Tech. He had a Baton Rouge. Um, you know what I'm saying? As far as females, I like Queen Key. I like Cash Doll. Um, my partner, she up and coming, Jiggy Zaza. Her Instagram, she hard as a bitch. I like females who just rap about that raw shit and they stand on, you know, some ball shit. I like that little hoe, um, damn, what's her name, too? She be spitting hard as a bitch. Damn, that just fucked me up. But, yeah, it, it's some females I listen to. Um, Not many, though, because I just, I can't relate. <laughs> but, shit. Yeah, your story is just way different yeah, than my, the regular. My, I would say more of what influenced me is my story. And like okay. other girls story too because it ain't just me i get texts daily dms daily damn i just heard that snippet that you posted and i cried because i've been through that so it's really more so not artists that influence me but really um seeing artists like three and taking stuff like that take pain for situations and put it behind the beat and not be scared to like tell how they really feeling on the inside all right 
No, that's dope. So, how did you even get into HSM? How did that even start? Um, to clarify, I'm not HSM. Okay. But I am affiliated. You know, Rainwater is my manager. Um, I was on Clubhouse. They was battle rapping, and, you know, they was putting money in. Shit, I'm, I wasn't scared. I had the money. Shit. So I gambled, you know, put the little $100 in. I, was, I went up against, like, Dun Dun, Miss G. Dun Dun crushed me. That nigga so fucking raw. Uh, Miss G beat me a couple times, too. But Rain was like, I see you not only putting money behind yourself, which is so bold and confident, but, nigga, you are. Like, you need to be working. So from there, you know, the the opportunity that was presented to me was supposed to be dope, you know, and it was supposed to be HSM and all of that. But um, that's how that went about, really, Clubhouse. Clubhouse was a raw little app when it was booming. It definitely networked a lot of people. That shit was raw. No, that's dope. Now, with you being around HSM, were you like, is there any music out with like number seven, maybe Don Don? I got that Garfield remix with seven. Um, I never did no other song with him. I got a song with Don Don. That bitch raw. It never came out. Um, I don't really too much know. <laughs> what's gonna happen or transpire with that? But the songs I did with them was definitely hard. Um, I just can't say really what's gonna happen next. I'm not a manager; I'm a rapper. Right? No, for sure. <laughs> what was going through your head? I mean, shit, I was, you know, trapping and rapping and on the road, with my cousin, the two seater. I shit for the ones who know, no shit. Um, yeah. No, for sure. Let's just play it. Fresh out of flow. I thought I like a scammer, yeah. but them niggas too shites. They only look out for they self, and I ain't on that type of timing. Cause I'ma die, go to jail about that nigga if we rhyme. Guess I like the looks of it, but I ain't in all this fight. I thought I like a rap nigga, like, yeah, we can relate. But when I started going harder, my own niggas start to hate. I don't watch the ones you love, cause they be turning into snakes. He may fuck you with no glove, but with her, he do the same. She when I was young and dumb, all I wanted was a pimp. But I kept falling in love, getting played like I'm a simp. Had to see the bigger picture, cause now I do this for my kids. Shit'll come when it's on your chill, and I don't need a nigga for nothing, but some head and some bread, and I need all blue hunnids, if we going down, we going fat, drinking pockets till they dead, bust a trick with this lady, tell my HP, don't be scared, we finna hit the tracks and tread, and I know it's just your first time, but once you touch a band in your hand, you gonna be alright, just trust me when I say it, stay down but up to daylight, a hundred days, a hundred late nights, off a beanie, off a gray white, finna hit me with that great and I'm a real rap bitch, but I just fell in love with that real trap shit, I can't help it, mama, I love touching all these commas in my bag, My throat get that from Ashley. Okay. White girl hair say it's the best and shit. Lastly, he love the way I text his tail. With these ass cheeks, rodeo that dick for show and did it in the backseat. Fuck me on the back street. Throw your hood up if it's villa. Hype me up and gas me. Show me that you nasty. I need a real nigga with great dick. Top tier, no lame shit. Be pressure for the record. You know he know my name, bitch. Look, cause like all state, your nigga in great hands. How he your boyfriend but wanna be my main man? He buy my baby shit with your paycheck. Oh God. <laughs> Hard real life, yeah. Ain't pressure, man. One more question. What's your goal with this music stuff? Damn, that's how you want to end it? Um, shit. I want to create generational wealth for my daughter, for the people I care about, for the ones I love. I want to pave the way for the people who paved the way for me, you know what I'm saying, was there when nobody else was. Don't too many people um around me believe in this pressure shit. But um, I'm going to paint the city pink. I'm going to put it in their face. For sure. Yeah, hey, y'all heard it here. Anything else you want to tell the people? Shit, my Instagram, Pink Pressure with two eyes on the pink. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Y'all could either go off what other people say or y'all can come come get y'all own view on me. I ain't even dropped shit yet. Y'all don't know if I'm hard, if I'm not. Shit, a nigga didn't know how old I am. I'm 20. I'm 20. Um, But yeah, shit, come get your own view about me as I like to say because it's going to be a lot said um, when this shit drop. So, shit, come find out about, you know, the real pink Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> Rich out of clothes.